OK, well, Eurosceptic Tory MPs have reacted with anger to claims that the government could pursue a Swiss-style deal with the European Union. Well, we should stress, Number 10 has categorically denied that the idea is even on the table. But last night, Nadine Durries warned Rishi Sunak not to pursue anything that could jeopardise the UK sovereignty, adding that voters needed to know that Brexit is safe. Well, earlier on the programme, we spoke to Immigration Minister Robert Jemrick, who said there was no truth to the story. And here's a reminder of what he said to us exclusively earlier. I don't know where that story came from, but uh, it's completely untrue. We have no intention of pursuing that kind of arrangement. There are respectable arguments either way, but we have a settled position now as a country, and we reached an agreement with the European Union in 2019 and 2020, and we're moving forward on that basis. Of course, there are opportunities now to improve our trading relationship, as there are to improve our uh, security and our immigration relationship with the European Union. But we're not interested in reopening the fundamental position that we reached with the EU a few years ago. Well, that was the Immigration uh, Minister a little bit earlier on. Joining us now to uh, analyse all of that is Harry Phibbs, Local Government Editor for Conservative Home. Good to see you, Harry. Morning. Do you Morning. believe uh, Robert Jenrick there? Do you think it is off the table? Because what does Jeremy Hunt mean then, uh, if that is true, when he says he wants to remove the major barriers to trade with the EU? Mm. Well, I don't think the Sunday Times would have made the story up. Mm. So there's obviously somebody, in, whether Jeremy Hunt or somebody in his, in, his, um, in his camp who have put it forward, but I don't think it'll happen. Uh, and the, 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 the point that people, that people sometimes don't grasp about um, free trade is that a basic point is there's a mutual benefit to it. You know, if you get, if you get a, uh, a buyer or a seller and they agree a price and they have a, and they have a trade, this whole idea that, that's, that, you know, who's won the deal, someone, you know, someone's got a better deal than someone else, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a mutual um, benefit. And that's, that's why it would make sense for the European Union to be less vexatious about all the, uh, all, all, all the customs control, which I think is politically motivated to punish us over Brexit, but it doesn't make economic sense for them or us. So I think we should, we should have freer trade with the, with the EU, as, as with all countries around the world. It doesn't mean that we should be giving them money. It doesn't mean that they should be um, uh, preventing us from controlling our borders. It doesn't mean that they should be telling us what laws to operate under, any more than it does with, with, with Canada or any of these other trade deals. I think that's, that's the misunderstanding. Free trade is, is a mutual benefit and we don't need to boss each other around. Yeah, and Harry, some of the detail about loosening of migration that came out in that leak to the Sunday Times, plus now the CBIs of today, this, this continued reliance on, on cheap migrant labour to do the jobs in Britain. That was a huge point during the Brexit referendum, particularly in the Red Wall, where the working classes were saying they were seeing their wages suppressed. It's really a relaxation of immigration, the sort of thing that's going to land well with the Conservative voters in the Red Wall again now. Uh no, but I, but I think that, that even more important than the amount of immigration is, is a, a sense of it not being under control. And that, of course, we, we've got that with the, the, the channel crossings. And I think, actually, if, if people felt that we, were, we had um, control over who was coming in, how long they were for, here for, what, what were the reasons for having people with particular skills, then I think people um, would, would be much more positive about immigration. But the idea of complete free movement with the European Union with, uh, with complete uh, lack of any control at all. Um, no, absolutely, that was a that was a source of dismay, and, and absolutely, the, any suggestion of, of, of going back to that would be regarded as a as a betrayal. Yeah, and look, we should stress again: the government very much denying that this is an option. I think you're absolutely right. It's very, very unlikely any mm. sort of Swiss style deal would be brought in. But I'm interested to get your thoughts on this CBI conference. Prime Minister heading up there uh, to give a keynote speech today. Uh, they've come out saying that labour shortages are holding Britain back. And Martin was touching on it there. We need to increase migration to tackle what they call a dormant economic decade. How does the government address that problem then? Well, one of the one of the things that's been discussed is the as, as a hangover from the from the pandemic and the lockdown and the number of um, people who, 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 aren't, who aren't sort of completely unemployed, but, but are still yeah. on, on out of work benefits of some kind or another. And the um, Taper for universal credit makes very little incentive for for, for people uh, to to take on more hours, and and there's uh, little support for people who you know who might be on sickness benefit would would still be uh, keen to work, and and with a bit of uh, uh, help and encouragement could be working. So I think that I think the focus should try to be on on getting 
um, British people back to work and British people uh, with, with, with more training. And, and then um, guess what? There wouldn't be the, the, uh, the, the labour shortages that... Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm absolutely true. I'm sure that this, this, the CBI right is saying that, the, that businesses are finding problems with labour shortage, but I think that, that would be a better way of tackling it. But at, the, at, the, at um, Jeremy Hunt's budget, there was an increase in benefits payments. There was a, a slamming down on middle earners, on the middle classes. So is the Tory government sending out the right messages about getting people to work to incentivise work? So, so paying people to not work in Britain and then importing labour, surely, is, is, is wrong-headed. We need to have incentives for all across the income scale. We need to do, do something about, about benefit reform so that people aren't trapped on benefits. But also, absolutely, we need to have incentives for, for, for rich people, successful people, uh, to be staying in this country. Uh, we, 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 want, we want them to be... Uh, uh, working hard and paying more tax and taking on us. And if we, if we pile on tax so high on businesses and on, and on the wealthy, it, it ends up being counterproductive. You put up the tax rates, but then because of the lack of incentive, the, the revenue, the revenue goes down. And I think we're already so highly taxed, mm. uh, that, that there's, it's, it's a really serious, um, mistake that Jeremy Hunt made, uh, with the budget last week to put tax even higher. I mean, there's been talk about spending cuts, but if you look at the, the facts, spending is going up and up and up each year, n not just in cash terms, but, but you know, allowing for inflation in real terms, and a bigger chunk of the nation's income is being, is being taken by the state, and we're sort of groaning under the, the weight of this, and it's really a socialist mm. policy that we've had from a supposedly conservative government. Oh, there we go. Uh, Harry Fibbs, always interesting to get your take. Local government editor from Conservative Home. Thank you very much Thanks. indeed.